welcome back to Workflow Walkthrough. My name is Frank Walsh, and today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what happens when you import images into Darktable. And I'm going to cover this because it certainly is a cause of confusion, uh, particularly for a lot of new users. And it shows up in the Facebook group very often. People are saying, what happens and why do I have all these adjustments applied to my images when I import them? So let's talk about that a little bit. What I have on my screen here is an image that I just shot for the purpose of this video and uh, I imported both the raw file and the JPEG file. Now you can probably see right off the bat that the previews here look slightly different. I haven't done anything with either of these images yet. The raw preview, since the image hasn't been opened by Darktable yet, is really just the JPEG file, uh, JPEG thumbnail that's embedded into the raw file. The JPEG file is, of course, the JPEG that came out of my Olympus camera. Why are they different is not something that I can readily answer, except that I suppose that the built-in styles in the camera uh, may not be applied to the thumbnail JPEG. Honestly, uh, I'm not really sure. It, it seems to be almost the same, but the saturation is, is slightly different. The brightness levels are the same. Uh, but the colors are, are not quite as deep in the, in the thumbnail. But let's take a look at these. I'm not going to open them in the darkroom yet. I'm just going to preview them because something happens when you preview a RAW file that throws a lot of people off. So first thing I'm going to do is select the JPEG and I'm going to do Shift W to open it up in a preview window. And the JPEG looks pretty much like it looked on the back of the camera. Uh, you know, hard to compare them directly, but you know, nothing really changes about the JPEG. Now I'm going to hit my left arrow key and we're going to go to the to the preview of the raw file and you're going to see something funny happen because it's the preview is going to open up looking one way and then it's suddenly going to change. So let's just take a look at that. So I hit left arrow and see that the preview started one way and then got darker all of a sudden. Now why in the world would that happen? Well, because now Darktable is actually looking at the raw file and is applying the defaults that I have set up for import. So what does that mean? Well, for most people, and I believe the current standard in Darktable for a new installation is when a raw file is opened, if you look under core options, the auto apply base curve and auto apply sharpen modules are turned off. Okay? So that means that Darktable is effectively doing nothing to your image except what it needs to do to display it. So that also causes some confusion. Let's open this up in the darkroom. We'll open up this raw file in the darkroom and people will say, yes, but look, there's all these things that have been applied to my file and I don't want any of that stuff except all that stuff is what's necessary to actually display a raw file on screen. All right, so the white balance is taking from your camera. It has to do mosaic. The input color profile is just determining what kind of a uh, image this was shot as. The output cr pro color profile is what do you want to display on the screen, the display encoding, and the orientation. So none of this is actually changing anything. If you click on original and you click compress, nothing goes away because all those things are required. And you'll also see that nothing changes on the image if I click back through these, these individual steps. So this image, why is this image darker than the JPEG? Well, because it hasn't been processed yet. And that's the nature of a raw processor. So what if I wanted my images when I imported them to look more like the in-camera JPEGs? Well, that's a matter of changing those two options that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go back to the light table. I'm going to select these two images and I'm going to remove them. First, I'm going to I'm going to discard the history from both and then I'm going to remove them. And now I'm going to go into these core options and I'm going to turn on the base curve and turn on sharpening and I will close that. Now I'm going to re-import. Let's take a look at what happens. Alright, now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. 
shift W. So that's the embedded JPEG, or that's the actual JPEG out of the camera, sorry, not the embedded JPEG. And now if I go left arrow key, okay, it gets darker in the preview just like it did before. However, if I open this, dark table will automatically apply the base curve, except that it didn't. Okay, let's see if the third time's a charm here, folks. I found that the XMP file was not being deleted, even though I was discarding the history. So that's why when I re-imported the files, they didn't uh, apply the base curve. So I tried that again, and I still didn't get the base curve. So I restarted Darktable after setting the preferences to auto-apply base curve and auto-apply sharpen. Take a look at those two options again here. We have auto apply base curve and auto apply sharpen turned on. Now, if I import that file, I now have the JPEG file. So, this is the JPEG file out of camera. And if I left arrow, this is the raw file with the base curve auto applied so you still you see it still did change it still shifted from using the embedded JPEG to the uh, base curve applied by Darktable but it didn't get as dark as it did before this is now what Darktable thinks Olympus uh, JPEGs look like it's not perfect but it's certainly closer from an exposure standpoint and if we open up that raw file we will see that the base curve module and sharpen modules have both been applied. So the base curve module is, is on and it is set to the Olympus like alternate as we can see because that's what's bolded. So that's the default base curve uh, that the dark table uses for my camera. You can change that, but uh, the, I don't use the base curve anymore. So I haven't bothered. So, how do you get a perfect copy of your in-camera JPEG? You don't. Um, <laughs> Darktable does not have access to the cookie recipe that your camera manufacturer uses to create your in-camera JPEGs. The base curve uh, does its best to come close and some for some cameras does a better job than others. But if you don't have base curve turned on, you are always going to end up with a image in Darktable that looks significantly different from what you saw in your camera and that's because Darktable is going to do everything it can to give you only the raw information and to give you every bit of the flexibility that it can to process the image the way you want to. All right, I hope this clears things up a little bit. I really didn't process an image today. I just wanted to talk about this import function because it seems to really throw people for a loop. Thanks, and talk to you again soon.